folks, good afternoon and welcome to The Zone. Today we're discussing the victory. A victory! Holy shit, an actual victory for Manchester United. 3-1 over the mighty Brentford. And uh, it's the morning after. Um, didn't have time to record a review of the match, but wanted to get one out today for you boys. So if you enjoy it, leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe. As you can tell, it's early morning, can barely speak. Um... Okay, so we're going to run through the match. First of all, I want to say I am pleased with the side he selected. I was very, very worried that he was going to go and revert back to sort of, how would you call it, form, sort. But he was just going to go ahead and pick all of the old ones. Because unfortunately, he tried a reset last match. It didn't really work. He kind of balls it up in the last 20 minutes. And ultimately, I thought, here we go. Uh, the reset is over, we're, we're making no progress, he's going to pick the same old squad, but, 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 he actually went ahead and picked a really good side, I thought. I thought deservedly the people that were dropped were correctly dropped, and the people that were put in deserved to be put in. And I didn't have any qualms or issues with the team selection, again, apart from De Gea. Um, I do have a vendetta, agenda, whatever you want to call it, against De Gea, I do. Um, I said it in my very first video and I've been very clear um, about that. I think for three years he's not been very good and he has his moments and he's a brilliant shot stopper and he'll keep us in the game but part of the reason we're kept in the game is because of his lackluster ball playing skills. He doesn't claim, he doesn't command, he doesn't really talk, he doesn't really um, you know, come out and sweep it. And I'm willing to be wrong as well. I'm not a, a football expert and I'm not paid to do this. So I'm just a guy of an opinion. And this season, De Gea's been very good at shot stopping. And he's been so good at shot stopping that it's made up for his other errors. However, again, I don't know how long that can continue. But this video is not about David De Gea. David De Gea today played well. But again, I still think he could have done some things differently. But he kept us in that first half. The first half performance came right out the gate and I thought ah it's just not got the energy they were all over us we were failing to clear it and again a key key component of every Man United game I'm watching these days is it's it's lax with the ball there'll be a simple three to four yard pass they'll over hit it a yard it'll be under hit. it'll be slightly to the left and right and it just gives the opposition players who these days everybody presses just gives them that extra chance to nick the ball to get some pressure or to at least take a second off say bruno who then has a second less to look for a better pass it all becomes erratic a bit skitty and it, it's not very enjoyable to watch to, to be completely honest um we got through the first half um it was it was nil nil if my memory serves me correctly after the first half. David De Gea kept us in it with some really good saves, but again I would like to reiterate the point. There was a lot of corners and a lot of looping balls in the air that De Gea never came out and claimed, never punched. We saw two elements: one where he did a punch and it was a bit flappy and it wasn't that great, but he connected with it, and then we saw one where. He kind of got fouled, but when you watch it back, he didn't really get fouled. Again, he just didn't really command or claim. And he's getting the balls in the air. There's a defender in front of him, and he's losing that ball. He should be able to jump and catch. He he can jump and use his arms. There's no way a, a standstill header should beat him. But again, I have my issues with him. I think uh, it's difficult to play modern football with David De Gea. I'll keep saying it until I'm blue in the face. Uh, I'm willing to be wrong, but... For all of his miraculous saves, there's a lot that leaves to be desired with his distribution. The The fact he doesn't sweep means we have to play in a certain style. But this result, um, it was not a bad performance by David De Gea um, today. So, you know, I just wanted to put out there that I still do have my little qualms about his performances. But I there are bigger issues than David De Gea. I think we can all agree. Um, So... The second half starts and I thought we were so much better, which is good because number one, it shows that either there's been a tactical tweak, the players have woken up, the manager's done something, something's happened. And I thought we played really decent-ish football in the second half. I don't need to go overboard and say we played amazing. I thought Tellez was good with his crosses, great shape and power, a little bit repetitive in the style of cross. They were getting red a lot and he wasn't switching it up or doing much overlapping. 
but it was a nice threat. Um, again, our corners are very, very poor. At this point, I'd rather we just did a short corner and then carried on playing rather than just waste 110 corners without a goal. Um, Alanga, I thought he struggled in the first half. And I'd just like to say uh, a quick point about Alanga. And this might seem really, really harsh, but listen to me. It's a real shame that that man's on the football pitch. And you're going to say, what? That's ridiculous. Of course it's not a shame. He's an academy player that's come through and he's scored a goal and he's done well in his performances. Yeah, I was so happy. I was watching the game with my dad and I was like, I'm really glad the lad scored. You know, I was super happy he scored. He wasn't having the best first half, but he stuck at it. He made the run. Nice touch and header. And from what I've heard from people that watch the academy more closely, that was a real academy style finish and it's in his locker. But it's a shame he's on the pitch, because if you think about this logically, and Man United fans need to be a bit more realistic here, Man United fans want to win the Premier League and Champions League and FA Cup, right? That's what they want. And the reason I say it's a shame he's on that pitch, because think about it. We set off this season, and we finished second. We then invested heavily, and we're now resorting to dropping our left winger because for years he's not been good enough in Rashford. That's not to say Rashford can't be good enough in some games and he's not a, uh, a good player. No, he's a great player, but he's not consistent enough, right? And we're not sure he ever will be. And we've had to drop him. And then instead of realising for quite a few years under Jose and other managers that Rashford might not be all that and getting a proper backup to actually push him, we're having to dig through the academy and just find some player that can play. This is the Glazers in a nutshell. The fans are getting hyped up and excited that an academy kid is playing, but realistically, it's just a cost-saving exercise. And it's unfortunate because the kid seems pretty good. He sounds like a good lad in his interview. But it's just symptomatic of the Glazers. It's just, okay, well, we don't need to dig into the transfer window because we might be able to scrap to fourth. The way I understand football is it's very difficult to make your first team as backups and then the following season have them be accepting of that role. What I mean by this is, let's say the players that were dropped today, Rashford, Maguire, Shaw, Wambasaka. They're okay at the moment because they think they're fighting for their place. But in their mind, they are first team players now. They've settled and they're first team players. So... If it comes out that by the end of the year, they're well out of favour, what needs to happen is they need to be basically told, you are now the backups for the new first 11. And if you're not happy with that, you are being sold for whatever price we can get. And then we're going to bring in new people to push the current new 11 on. But what ends up happening at many clubs and at Man United is what will happen is we will bench them they will not be happy that they are the bench sort of lot now. Um, what will happen is the new first 11 that we've picked because they're young and inconsistent and let's be honest, they're not perfect, are they? We would happily upgrade them. They won't be consistent enough. They won't be good enough. And at, at times in the season, they will have to be dropped for those backups. And those backups won't be accepting of the backup role. They won't be trying. They'll be grumpy. And we also know that those backups aren't actually good enough and that's why they were backups in the first place. And then it all just capitulates and goes wrong. Um, so again, that's why refreshing the squad is important, but refreshing it in a way that is conducive to actually winning things. And the way that happens is you get the backups of this season, like Rashford and Shaw and Wambasaka, and you say, listen, are you accepting of this backup role, yes or no? Are you going to fight for your place, yes or no? And if they're really not interested in it, you get shut, and then you buy some proper competition and then you, again, reassess, okay, the current first 11 of uh, Tellez and Alanga, how do you compete with these new guys? Are you now the backups? And you constantly refresh and rotate. That never happens, and we just end up with this stagnant team. That's why we're not going anywhere. And in terms of the match, again, I thought we attacked very well. I thought it was a... Uh, it was a ropey performance at times. I didn't like when I did not like when Ronaldo came off and threw his hissy fit. But he's been doing that under Fergie. That is Ronaldo. It's fucking annoying to see. You know, we're two 0 up. You're just coming off the back of an injury. We've got another game in three days. You've been subbed because last time we didn't make defensive changes. We threw the fucking game. 
use your brain and just accept it and also be a bit more accepting of the fact that you know you carry a lot of weight these days um you are like a superstar you know early days at manu he was a superstar but not anything like he is now and he should know within himself when i do this strop it's going to put unnecessary pressure on the manager like the press conference he had to answer three or four questions about ronaldo and he just needs to shut the fuck up and just bite his lip and just go yeah it's fucking annoying i didn't get to stay on and score but the reason it's happened is because last time we we threw away points which is the bigger issue but for ronaldo the points don't really matter as long as if he scores it seems like so we we know where he comes from but you know, that's not to say Ronaldo isn't a team player. Ronaldo, in a way, is the ultimate team player because he's so self-obsessed with scoring that that helps the team. But I will never shit on Ronaldo. I can understand his frustration. Yeah, it's annoying, but all players get pissed off when they get subbed. It's just unfortunate that he's this mega star that brings attention. Um, I thought... The midfield was pretty decent. I thought Fred was a bit sloppy. It was one of those Fred performances, high energy, big smiles, but a bit sloppy. I thought um, Scott was fairly decent. You never know what you're going to get between those two. And I'll end it on Maguire. Mate, Maguire needs to go. I'm sorry. He needs to go. He's too expensive. He's got too much of a, a sort of an ego now as Man United captain to sit on the bench. But the bloke CV is just relegation, relegation, failed cup, failed cup, poor performance. He comes on today. We go into a back five. We're two nil up. And he knows that last game we almost threw. And he comes on and does four or five hospital passes. He comes on and does some lax tackles. Just, uh, I think he even tackled his own tellers at one point. And then we concede. And we looked literally, we looked more shaky you know less sturdy when Maguire came on and he needs to be dropped mate for a good period I don't know what's happened to him um I was pleased Rashford came on and got the goal but I'll be honest with you I'd rather he just sat on the bench and got told listen you're not playing you need to book your ideas up and wise up but I'll never complain of him coming on and scoring because it sort of sealed the game um is this a reset I'm not sure um, but I was positive that Ralph is at least, I think he's very clearly, he's very clearly slowly tweaking the team, which is good. We're going in a certain direction. I like the direction we're going in. I'm just wondering, it's probably all going to come undone. Like when I spoke about the reinforcements, the bench, the sorting out of the team, I don't think the Glazers are going to help in that regard. Maybe he goes into his consultancy role and does it. I wish he was manager for a bit longer. So he actually had I wish he was named manager and got a full season. Even if it was just one season to sort the squad out, then at least the players knew what was up. But I feel like they're taking a bit of leeway with him, uh, you know, taking a bit too much rope because they're well aware he's leaving and he's in interim manager mode. But I enjoyed the game. We got the win. Um, ropey at times. David De Gea good saves. Poor by Maguire. All right by the midfield. I think to note, um, who I should note just before we end, Bruno is looking a lot brighter. He's looking way better. And I've said this for a long time that Bruno just needs to sit deep and pick some passes. He doesn't need to be a shadow striker, number 10. You know, remember how like Deli Ali burst onto the scene and he just became like, yeah, he didn't have a position. He was like almost a striker, but not a 10. Not a 10, but not a midfielder. And he, he was like the shadow striker. And it sort of disappeared out of the game. I like Bruno's position. Um, he should have fucking scored that shot, man. He tried to chip the keeper in the last second. And that guy cost me in four more, five more points in Fantasy League, bro. And I'm dying for Fantasy League points. Because my, my Fantasy League team is dead. I've given up with it completely. But I put Bruno in this week. And he should have scored that goal. But yeah, that was the review. If you enjoyed it, leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe. Thanks very much. Um, and also appreciate your kind words in the last video talking about my illness with parosmia. So thank you very much. Appreciate it.